Hello everyone and welcome back to Pyro Falcon's Let's Play Extravaganza, where it's your Let's Play 2. I am Pyro Falcon and you are watching Ogre Battle 64. Between episodes, as I promised in the last episode, I'm going to rename all the unit leaders after you. Let me know in the comments below if you want a unit named after you. But I discovered some cute things here when you try to change the name of a character who already cannot be changed. Like if we try to change the name of the main character, why do you say that now? You're the one who chose it. Ha <laughs> ha, fourth wall breaking shit. And then if you find Dio, you're trying to be my parent. My name's Dio, nothing else. All right, Jesus, relax, dude. So using the Blazing Hawks regulars in the Discord channel, we have Cute Shaman, who is a knight. He is leading unit six. We have Archmage Kalen who is playing as a witch. I thought that was apropos. She is leading unit number nine. And we have Kam Kamar Kamaro. That should be Kamoko. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I apologize, Kamoko. It is that, right? I have to bring up my Discord just to double check. Okay, great. Boy, is my face red. Kamoko is leading unit number... Uh, 18? Oh, they actually have individualized unit numbers, not just... Huh. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so Cam is... Ah, Cam is down there. Um, now, I also have an opening for another woman. I only had one woman name in Discord when I put the call out. So again, if you wish to have a character named after you, please let me know in the comments below both your preferred name and your preferred gender for your character name. Um, I will likely not name the side characters, like here's Jones. Um, he's just operating under Patsy's unit. So I won't name him unless we promote him to another class and give him his own unit. Um, although I can change the classes of a few units, such as these two, I can't actually change them to anything. So I believe what's going on is the game is not letting me change him in anything until we get past the prologue, which is one more stage. So I'm only going to do two episodes of this for now. This will be the only other episode of my recording session because I want to get your names before I proceed too much further into the game. So please let me know in the comments below if you wish a character to be named after you. But for now, let's go rescue Prince Yumal. That is what we are doing. Scene two, Sparks. Don't worry, Yumal, we're coming. We are going to save you. I promise. Our information is meager, but I did manage to make a plan. Let me start. Refer to the map. Oh, this is going to be a short one. Episode, I mean. This is going to be a short episode. Let's get started. We'll be using the Suikin, the Land of Enlightenment, as our headquarters. Our goal is to rescue Prince Yumal. Unfortunately, we don't know where he's being held captive. Therefore, we should march our troops south along the road and liberate strongholds on the way to gather information on Yumal's whereabouts. You got it. The briefing will end, yes. Yeah. So we're not actually rescuing him at the moment. We're just going to beat down some dudes until we find out. I'm sorry, but this is all I can do. I'm heading to Aka Castle. Good luck, Slappy. You got it, Pally. We're just, we're just gonna stare at each other for a second, I guess, but okay. All right, so not only do we have the red strongholds to deal with, we can grab the greens and capture them, thus lowering our reputation, because just in case you forgot, in the first episode, we are shooting for the second worst ending in the game. Oh. Hello, Miss Cleric, who is coming after Slappy immediately. I'll just let you come to us. So one difference between... Ogre Battle 64 and Ogre Battle Classic is in Classic, the enemy could have up to 25 to 27 units in their camp, and they could send them after you um, over the course of a single battle. In this game, the enemy only has about 10 units per map, but they might ambush you anyway. So the battles will probably not be as long, especially because in this playthrough... Uh, that we're doing for the channel, I am not going to go for a full kill every single time 
anything is happening because a full kill will take a while and I want to keep things going a little at a slightly more brisk pace. So for example here, we're beating the holy hell out of the cleric and if she becomes a leaderless unit, they'll just stand around and panic. There's no reason to wipe a unit off a map if we don't have to. Um, in Ogre Battle Classic, it was arguably necessary because we needed to, um, oh shit, we're about to be jumped at the side. Okay, Kalen, you head over here. So normally I'm a little bit more tactical about which units go where, but this is still only the prologue and we can't really do much with our reputation right now. So we're just moving like this and uh, I need to face Slappy to the west because we have that unit coming up on our ass. Oh, see, he auto turns. He wants to look at the closest unit, which is fine, but if he doesn't look west, he can be flanked. There we go. Now he'll keep his eye on that unit. I don't know where she's going. There's nothing over there. Why are you going in that direction, Cleric? It's very strange. Anyway. So, um, in Ogre Battle Classic, the only way to eliminate a unit was to completely wipe it off a map. And sometimes you would have trouble getting experience points if you didn't kind of slow things down and slaughter units you came to. However, in this game, there is a training mode you can do between every single fight to gain levels. Therefore, doing full unit wipes really don't matter, because once a unit loses its leader, it cannot uh, go after you in any way. It cannot attack your units, it cannot move. All it can do is run away from you. So, like there, this unit we just took out cannot move. We've just neutered it. It will try to run away from us now. Um... So I'm just in an effort to make sure these episodes don't last multiple hours. We're going to speed things along, take units out that way, and worry about catching up our weaker units to everybody else between episodes once we start getting more cash. Um, I might show one of those just to show the process for those who are unfamiliar, but no big deal. And we are dropping alignment in this unit, which is fantastic because we need a very low alignment unit and a very high alignment unit by the time the game is done. So as the faster we can do all of that, the better. Yeah, see, the because that unit is leaderless, it immediately wants to run away from the closest unit to it. So there's no reason to hunt them down unless you really just want to slaughter people and get experience points for it. Um, that's the way I usually play in my own uh, file, but just for the sake of the show, we're going to speed up the process a little bit. I learned some of these techniques for grinding with my Final Fantasy Tactics run, because good god that game tested my patience, and uh, it was very nice not to have to... Or I, I learned how to properly grind for the sake of the show. Like, I should have grinded all my Final Fantasy Tactics stuff off the camera, and that would have kept my sanity better in check. Um, but it is what it is. Lessons are learned. There we go. Good job, Dio. Oh, shit. He... Oh, never mind. That is the formation I wanted. Like, man, that's a weird formation. But whatever. All right, so that unit is fully eliminated. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. Oh, hello, Mr. Wizard. Leaving your city. Wait, there's something here. I got a hard leather. Hooray! All right, let's get it on. So our next stage, our next episode, is going to be very different as far as the team formation is concerned in this one because we'll have full freedom, I'll be able to promote some classes, I'll have your names to work with, and I'll be able to change some things around uh, to have an army that I prefer, not just what the game kind of dumps on me. But that is fine. Alignment up. So you gain alignment by attacking units with lower alignment than you. Wizards are considered low alignment. So Dio gains some alignment. And clerics are considered high alignment, which is why uh, Cute Shaman's unit took a hit, because they beat up the cleric. But, uh, you know, if she didn't want, want to be beaten up, then she shouldn't have raised her staff against us, you know? It's kind of her fault. 
the rows of your enemies are, and your own units are important because that determines how many times they can attack and sometimes what attacks they can even do. So we put Dio and the fighter in the front row so they got multiple attacks and we put the archers in the back row for the same reason. Um, there are optimal ways to do things. There are better formations than other formations. There are all sorts of things you can do in the game and there are exploits you can try to, uh, well, exploit. I don't like playing that way personally, so I'm not going to play that way. Even though there are ways we can do it to make it easier on us. Hey, cutscene. What's taking them so long? They'll be here any minute. They found our plan a little while ago. There shouldn't be anyone in the area except for the prince's escort. We have a very small advantage, so let's not screw this up. Why hasn't the scout come back yet? They're looking for him right now. This plan has got to work. If we can't hand those three over, this whole thing falls apart. Th they're here. Huh? The, Palati the Palatinian army is here! Hi, Mr. Knight, just walking up. So as you can see, the knight is in the back row. So he only gets one attack back there. In the beginning, the enemies are intentionally arranged in such a way to make things much easier on you as you're learning the ropes. Um, this formation I have in this unit is a little odd because if my soldiers were in the same row, then they would be able to attack together. But I did it this way to protect the witch in the center. So I, there is method to my madness. So we just push that unit out of the city. We're going to take the city, probably liberate it. Yep. All cities at the beginning are going to be liberated rather than captured. Are you hurt, my lord? Thank you, Jill. I'm okay. Are you all right, Raid? Damn those sons of bitches. Hey, that was proper grammar. Good job, game. What took you so long, incompetent southern division? Well, anyway, I appreciate your timely rescue. Which post do you belong to? Uh, I'm not yet assigned to any post, sir. Not a sign. What, are you guys rookies or something? Who's your commander? Uh, their commander is named Slappy. I, I just happened to pass by. My unit has nothing to do with them. You were the only ones who came to rescue us? Bullshit. What the hell is the Southern Division doing? All right. I'll give you a chance to prove yourself. Go and take care of the rebels. Kill them all! Make sure you tell that slappy guy, understood? <laughs> Boy, the narrative is, uh, slightly neutered with that name. Is, is that really necessary, sir? Shut up, kid. Yes, it is necessary. Rebels wish for the downfall of this kingdom. They jeopardize the lives of innocent people and bring discord to peaceful lands. What else do, can we do to protect our kingdom and the people we love? We must crush them and teach them the futility of their defiance. That is the only way. I know it is a painful task to carry out, but it must be done. I'm gonna sneeze. That's getting edited out, because that was gross. Now go and kill them. Uh, yes, sir. What's going on with that merchant dude in the background there? He's kind of freaking out a little bit. Slappy is here? Those are really stupid googly eyes. Hey, where do you think you're going? Whoa, that's a badass sword. Did you hear what I just said? That all rebels deserve to die. Well then, I guess his googly eyes are no longer a problem. Bastard. Uh, how could he do such a thing? My lord, we should get moving. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now we have our true victory condition. Not a problem. Okay, so the mine was captured by an enemy. No big deal. We will get him, them. And this battle, as all tutorial battles are, is very simple, very relaxed. We will... Well, that was easy. Bye, wizard. Lineman up. Good job, Dio. <laughs> I love the fighter's animation because he just kind of shimmies his sword no matter where he's going. It's adorable. All right. Oh, jeez. Fight it out. That is one thing I miss in Ogre Battle Classic. Whenever you have an engagement, there's a voice that goes, Fight it out. And I miss that, and I don't know why. Probably pure nostalgia, but I can't help it. Ow. Ow. So soldiers cannot be refreshed in the field, unfortunately. So that unit only has a single soldier in front. I'm going to switch her, her formation. Because I don't want Kaelin to have only one soldier in front of her. So we switch these two. And unfortunately, the soldier in the back also cannot heal. The way the game works is a soldier unit is comprised of three men. And if one dies, like, you can imagine it as being three chunks of the hit point bar. So since two of the soldiers in the now back are dead, the unit cannot heal beyond one third of its health, which is unfortunate, but... The soldiers have to go. They are a necessary sacrifice. Um, so the way the math works on the game, every time this unit, or any unit, wins a skirmish, they get an invisible number of points based on how many soldiers are alive at the end. So here, there are three soldiers alive at the end. So this unit gets three points. Every time the unit gets 100 points, one of those soldier units flips to a standard unit either a fighter or an Amazon, based on the gender of its leader. So since Archmage Kaelin is in charge of this unit, once she gets 100 points, one of those two soldiers will turn into an Amazon. And then that Amazon unit can then be further promoted if we get enough experience and such like that. There. Wow, we are... Kaelin is keeping that knight absolutely neutered. And that's that. Good job, Kalen. Alignment down, but fuck it. And that is another three points for Kalen. And unfortunately, we don't get to see those points. We can only guess. So that there is why you want to wipe out units. You would get treasure for doing so. Um, it's not a huge deal. But, uh... You know, because usually the, the treasure you get from getting... Uh, for for wiping out a unit is not really that much, so it's it's not a huge deal. So we are going to leapfrog Komoko's unit once he gets there. There are also various speed settings, I believe. Yeah, but I like keeping the game speed on normal just because it gives me a chance to react if there is bullshit that happens. But, of course, in these early missions, there's going to be very little bullshit. Do we even have another... Nope, there's only one. Neutral city. Alright. Hmm, maybe I should speed... Eh, nah, screw it. We can all relax, right? I don't need to blitz through the game as fast as humanly possible, do I? So, this is Ogre Battle 64, as you know, but the thing is, you cannot per... Why does she keep running from me? Is she just afraid of my unit? Or is she trying to divert me away from my headquarters? That's very strange. Well, whatever. We'll just let her do what she wants to do. There's no reason to chase her down. So, um... The, uh... You cannot get this game right now because I bought it on the Wii Shop channel. The original Wii shop channel and they are shutting that down you can no longer add points as of i think january 1st of 2018 so if you did not already have some wii points on your wii shop channel you cannot purchase this game and the wii shop channel completely shuts down in 2019 i believe on january 1st 
So, can't get this game right now, which sucks. Hopefully it comes to the Wii U shop channel or the Switch uh, shop channel eventually. One can hope because it is a phenomenal game that everybody should definitely play because it's super fun. There is definitely a dearth of strategy games on consoles, and it would be fantastic to see more, um, which unfortunately is just not a thing right now. So hopefully more strategy games come to consoles. But consoles, especially because of their nature of having controllers and such, they are definitely more suited for twitchy games, fast games, you know, like your first-person shooters and your actions and your platformers. Um, but Ogre Battle and Ogre Battle 64 prove that having a strategy game on your console, uh, they will sell and they can be very good quality if the right person is in charge of it. So Cam's unit here is a very defensively oriented owl. I thought he wouldn't be able to reach my unit. Well, we're going to have to change the formation of this unit a little bit. We need to separate the soldiers a little bit. So our uh, cams unit just got six points. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Formation. Cams unit just got six points, so they are well on their way to getting a new unit. But he is very tired. You have to think ahead about their fatigue if you send them on a long march. But we are okay so far. There we go. So that is what I like Ogre Battle 64 over um, Ogre Battle Classic for. Like, I like the fatigue. I like formations. I like that you have to think ahead about your orders and not just send dudes out wherever you want to send them. Oh, jeez. And you still took some damage. Fair enough. All right, well, that's five more points for Cam's unit. And of course, points carry over from battle to battle because otherwise you would never have new units. So until we get some new units, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to field a full team, but it's no big deal. We will get there eventually. The army will grow massive and there will be vampires and liches and zombies, skeletons, wizards, valkyries. All sorts of cool units will be a part of our army eventually. Is she actually heading toward the city? Can a leaderless unit capture a city? Huh. I didn't think a unitless leader could. I don't think a unitless leader can move other than to run away from your units. Maybe if, by coincidence, she lands on the city, it could happen. So this is where you can take advantage of the camp. I could send Slappy to attack this unit, since it's just sitting here in its camp. And you even get a free turn because the enemy is sleeping. So when you attack, the enemy must pass its first turn. Um, and if you only get one attack per battle, then you're screwed and you don't get to attack at all. So attacking an enemy while they sleep is a very sound strategy. Dishonorable as it may be, it does not seem to affect the ending or affect um, the uh, your reputation, or if it does, it's not by much. Um, all the FAQs have said that the main way to affect your reputation is capturing or liberating cities. That seems to be true. Um, it doesn't seem to matter. Anything else in the game does not seem to matter other than whether you capture or liberate cities, and we will be trying to capture as many as we possibly can rather than liberate in order to get the second worst ending of the game. And the reason we're going for the second worst and not the worst, uh, this will be a tiny spoiler, but not really much of one. Um, if you qualify for the bad ending, then that, well, if you, if you qualify for one of the worst two endings, then you have a special final battle after the final boss. Um, I won't spoil any more than that, but if you win that battle, then you get the second worst ending, arguably the worst ending. And if you lose that battle, you get a different ending. So the point is we are going to shoot for the final 
battle past the boss. We're going to go for the secret final battle, and we want to win that battle because I do not want to lose it. Um, it has sort of an interesting ending to it, um, which I've never seen. I've just read about, uh, and I think it'll be really fun to, well, maybe fun is the wrong word, but it'll be really interesting to watch. So that is what we are shooting for in this playthrough. All right, so Patsy's unit. And again, if you want to have Patsy's unit, please let me know in the comments below, but she is a girl, so please set your gender that you want for your character name in the comments as well, and I will get that to happen. I don't want to take your life. Drop your weapons now. How pathetic. Are you trying to threaten us? We pledged our lives to the revolution. You're not going to stand in our way. We'll create a world where society is not based on class and everyone has equal rights. Like I said, this is a very on-brand game for Yasumi Matsuno. This is what he always does for his story themes. Feel our pain, our sorrow, our wrath. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's fine. Um... Our Valkyrie's gonna kick your ass, but that's okay. Valkyrie... Alright, maybe this one won't be so easy. Anyway, Valkyries also can cast magic if they're placed on the back row. And uh, I might want to look into her stats because... She does not really seem that good in the front row. She may have a much higher intelligence than her strength. That's a bit of a problem. All right. Yeah, you set up camp. We're gonna we're gonna check your formation. Real quick. I think I can actually screw with units on the organization screen, which you could not do in the uh, in Ogre Battle Classic. Yep, I can. Okay, so you can look over a unit. So here's Patsy. She gets two cleaves in the front row, one cleave in the middle row, and two lightnings in the back row. She has 69 strength and 53 intelligence. Holy shit, she is stronger in the front. That's very strange, but okay. Okay. Uh, we'll let her rest up and see what we got. Um, if I have to, I'll send in a different unit instead. In fact, I'm thinking about sending in Cam's unit to end this. Go ahead, Cam. You... You're fresh, too. Go ahead and hit the mine. Because the enemy is attacking with physical offense, and Cam's unit is uniquely suited to handle physical offense. Um, I think I'm going to keep Cam's unit together. Usually what I do, and I am going to do this, but after this battle between episodes, I'm going to break apart every single unit we have and then customize every single unit we have to make a very good collective army. But I will do all of that off camera, so I will not bother you guys and uh, with any of that nonsense, because that will completely slow down the momentum of the, of the series, especially because I can't speak while doing it, because I need to concentrate. So, all right, Patsy is free. We will let her attack again. Uh, you know what, no we're not. Patsy, why don't you retreat back to this city, since that's the closest one. Get your health back because they will heal up when they're in cities as well. Pitch and camp only recovers their fatigue, not their hit points. We can buy items eventually to heal them in the field, but we don't have the cash for that right now. We will have that eventually, though. Yeah, it's better. That's a lot better. Yep. We... Ugh. Uh, we're still going to lose by points, and we would lose anyway due to the fact that these are bosses, but it's not so bad. Um, we did a lot of damage, and as long as we attack quickly, we'll be able to capitalize on the damage they took. I'm going to send in Cute Shaman's unit as well to help out, because sometimes when you deal with the bosses, you have to hit very hard and very fast. You can also use flanking techniques to surround the unit and hit them with every unit you've got all at once. Um, hopefully it's not necessary. It shouldn't be necessary in this one. And the boss units, unlike in Ogre Battle Classic, they can lose their people. So if we go balls out with taking out the Hellhound, for example, um, the Hellhound will no longer be a part of this unit and then we will have a much easier time. Oh my God. 
Wow, we might have to, uh... Because I can't risk Kamoko himself going down. Oh, shit. We may have to concentrate on this one. All right, um... All right, Cam's unit will retreat back to the city. This is a bit more complex than I thought. All units, please proceed to that city that looks like Xenia, but it's not Xenia. It is Zera. All units, all units, other than Slappy, because we don't want Slappy to lose his city. And this is making this city vulnerable because we still have that cleric unit who's just hanging out for some reason. Um, but I'm not falling for a shit. I'm not going to have Slappy leave the headquarters to go deal with her. Um, change my mind. All units, even cute shaman. All units, please proceed to the city. Then we, we can rest up and hit them together. We found a light mace. Hooray. Um, so yeah, so that puts the city in jeopardy because this cleric unit could go south and capture any of those cities we left behind, but it's not a big deal if we do. That's a loss of reputation, usually, but that's good for us since we're shooting for a bad ending. Um, bad ending, of course, is absolutely subjective. Uh, it's just what you want to do. Although, for those who are curious, this game does take place in the same universe, in fact, the same countries as the original ogre battle maybe it takes place north of where the original countries were in ogre battle classic um but it, it does take place in the same world and uh the original ogre battles cannot can't can an ending is the best ending um so uh the hero of ogre battle one managed to get all the legendary treasures and do all these good things and get all these dragoons and did all sorts of lovely things and then ran off to do other military shit. So that is where we are at. So we are going to rest for a few in-game hours here. Make sure everyone recovers their fatigue. This is taking for flipping ever to get ever. Maybe I should set the speed to maximum. All right, everyone relax for a minute. So Kalen is tired. Dio is Dio is a little sleepy. I am gonna do that. Let's uh, let's set the game speed to high. Even though earlier I said I would not do that. Can that even work? It doesn't really feel like anything's changed. It says it is. Once we get more military units, we'll have greater flexibility when it comes to this stuff. So we will move out at 20 hundred hours. Everyone should be nice and healthy by then. All right, all units. Oh, and everyone is nice and healthy. Please move out. So now, even if... Uh, shit. Even if he defeats one unit, we will hit him five times in such quick succession, he will not have a chance to heal himself. Now, later, enemies will have the chance to heal themselves because the enemies in this game play by the same rules you do. So enemies in this game will eventually have items where they can heal themselves, they can restore their fatigue or do other things, but their item count is limited. So with enough attrition and enough money on your part, you can win any battle just by throwing your units at it repeatedly until it dies. So we have... Yeah, we'll just stick with fast speed. That's not as blisteringly fast as I thought it was, especially because I can throw a pause anytime, and it's a tactical pause, so I can give orders and do whatever I need to do while we are paused. I have to admit, this is a bit of an embarrassment that we were not able to take down this unit as fast as I wanted to. I'm gonna hold Shaman until the others catch up. Alright. Alright, Shaman, go after him. That was almost a full day's march. But, all five units attacking at once, even though the enemy is fully healed by now for sure. Yup. Um, they're gonna have to deal with a ton of damage in a very short amount of time and no way to heal. So we will get them here. And I use a rotation system, generally speaking, when we play the main game. So all of my units should have the same uh, level as we proceed, in theory. Um... 
we'll see if that happens, but we should be able to pull it off. Thanks to training. I only train the weakest units to keep everyone nice and even for when we go to war. Bam! Oh, you didn't get to heal very much, did you, quad? I've got archers and soldiers who you're probably going to beat the shit out of. Oh, that poor soldier. He might not survive. Oh, never mind. He'd... Yeah, he'll survive it then. I was going to say he might not survive another attack, but... Yep, he survived. Oh, God. Never mind. Jesus Christ. Luckily, uh, they don't really have much left, so Kalen will be fine. And Dio is going to be the big winner. Because there is no way Dio will lose this fight. In fact, he might get it done on one attack. Nope. There we go. Victory! Alignment up for taking down a Beastmaster who ha or a Beastman who have uh, low alignments. Why don't you finish me off? There's no point in risking your life to kill a lowly soldier like myself. As I said before, I don't want to take your life as long as you keep on living. What? Stop talking smart to me. Your sympathy won't change our fate. Mind you, we are the ones who attack the prince. Uh. Uh. Yay! Stage two is complete. We get sound full fireworks now and a leather whip. And how many soldiers? Eight soldiers, which definitely recovers our numbers plus gives us a few more. Excellent. Man, I love this game. I'm so excited to be playing it for the show. Thank you for saving us. You told me your name was Slappy. Are you the same Sla- Hey, who ordered you to take them alive? There must be a reason why they did that. I believe it would be beneficial for the kingdom to listen to what they have to say. Shut up! There is absolutely no need to listen to their bitching! The only thing that matters for these low-class scum is what they have to face at this moment. The workload is too harsh. The living conditions are sad. They only think of themselves. Why listen to those who don't think about the future and of the entire kingdom? Instead, they believe that they're the only ones who are miserable? Speak for yourself. We only think of ourselves? Who took everything away from us for their own good? You, the so-called upper class that can't do anything without the protection of Lotus, which is uh, basically the country slash church empire. The heartless beasts that prey upon the people and indulge in their desires. You call us beasts? We dedicate our lives to the peace and prosperity of this kingdom. Kick. We fulfill our duty, kick, as the upper class, and get compensated accordingly. Kick. Great, stop. Why? These scoundrels tried to kill us, my lord. They tried to kill you for their own selfish end. My lord, this is part, no, this is the last stage of the inspection. Please stand back and watch. Yes, we must protect the prince and the royals from having any knowledge whatsoever. What? What are you doing? Raid, what do you think you're doing? Sir, I believe Prince Yuma wants you to stop. You're quite bold for a rookie. The prince is too merciful. As a member of the royal family, he needs to learn the harshness of the world. Isn't this a good opportunity for him? He can see for himself how to punish those who oppose us, the upper class. Stop it. Punch. Punch. Ugh. Slappy. Well, isn't that too bad? There goes your achievement, kid. 
trying to punch a superior officer. You have raised your sword against the lineage of the progenitor. Are you prepared to accept the consequences? Isn't that lineage too noble to be mere puppets of Lotus? All right. No! Well, isn't your blonde hair pretty? And you call yourself a knight? What the- Who the hell are you? Or do all knights in this land devour helpless souls? Here, this way. You! Oh, that was the wrong voice. You! There we go. It's probably better. Uh, excuse me, sir. Who the hell are you? Get out of my way! Mysterious warrior, Saradin! Hey, he's from the first game! With the blinding light, bind my foes with unbreakable chains. Disperse the shadows. Ray of Paralysis! Where did the... Where did the big flashing white light come from, though? Damn it! Don't let him get away! Wow, he moves pretty fast for being fully armored. Thing these pants are yellow. I I couldn't I couldn't do anything. Humal. Oh, the helplessness of royalty. That is also a good theme, uh, or on brand of our uh, of our designer Yasumi Matsuno. Owing to the Southern Division's actions, the attempt to assassinate Prince Humal at Volmus resulted in failure. Ugh, it's a little chilling. The incident concluded with the public execution of the Mastermind. Rumors spread among the population that they executed a person who had no relation to the incident to save face. Indeed, we don't know who the Mastermind is. Meanwhile, dot dot dot. Expected to dwindle, the rebels' activities have instead intensified and become more violent than ever. Yeah! I'm going to kill these people with my broom. The outcome of the public execution was not as expected. It not only affected the lower class, but the upper class, who were disgruntled by the injustice, as well as the middle class. You can only push people so far before you break them. And with that, we have concluded the prologue as we enter Chapter 1, unable to turn back, speechless, and itinerant. I think someone failed on the localization on that one, but... That's fine. Come in. Oh, hey, that's our um, general mustache from the opening prologue. It's a massive office, man. Slappy Galant, reporting is requested, sir. Well. I'm sure you are aware that the Rebels' activities have become more aggressive recently. Their strength is minimal. What concerns me is that they initiated their actions simultaneously in various parts of the kingdom. That must mean they are getting their act together. So in order to stop the uprising and suppress the Rebels, we will organize the troops specifically for that purpose. That's a good way to stop the common people. Send in the army after them. Your performance in the military academy, one month of field training and actual combat. Can't believe you've just recently graduated. I have no idea why you came to the southern region, but I'm willing to test you. You are now a captain of the southern division. 
I will assign you a group of men and a tactician. This will be your battalion. Now head to the Krennel Canyon and, dis and subdue the rebels and forge a Tuatha. Uh, sir, why did you choose me? Don't get me wrong, this does not mean that your actions have been justified. The abduction and attempted murder of Prince Yumal while he was in our jurisdiction? Well, we even need rookies like yourself to help clean our reputation. That's all. I want to make one thing clear, though. I'm not asking for your opinion or your consent. You hear me? This is an order. Just keep quiet and follow my orders. You will be provided money, organize your troops, and attend to your duty. Understood? Yes, sir. Don't ever show sympathy for them again. You can't do anything about it alone. Set aside your personal feelings, focus on your regiment, and what you can do for your kingdom. I always like games that sort of break from the so-called the one trope. Um, I used to call it the dude because I didn't have any uh, better name for it. But it's where all g games, almost all games, you are the one, you are the star child, you are the one who will unite the war or unite the country and blah, blah, blah. And that's all well and good. That's all well and good. We all need our power fantasies. But I like games that cast you instead as a small part. Now, in this game, the, although the premise makes it seem like you're just one battalion in a larger army, things will change. You sort of become the one. It is what it is. And I'm not really complaining about it. It just, like I said, is what it is. But games like Romance of the Three Kingdoms um, are really cool for that uh, because you are only a small part of a thing, which is kind of cool in my opinion. I wish there were more games like that. But anyway, that will do it for today's episode of Ogre Battle 64. Don't forget to check the video description where we have a Discord channel link. Also links to PayPal and Patreon if you wish to support the channel and help me pay my bills because holy crap are we low on money and right now any donations you send us is going to food. You can go to PayPal for a one-shot donation or you can go to pay uh, Patreon to support me monthly and uh, help us out there. Also, the Patreon page is soon going to be relaunched if you're watching this on release day. So there might be some really cool extras that are going to show up. You have to stay on Patreon to see what they are, though. But that will do it for this episode. Yeah, this was the end of episode two, which means no more self-plugging. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments. If you wish to have a character named after you, please set your gender in the comment as well. And our army and our game will start in earnest next time. So thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you probably in two days rather than tomorrow for another episode. So I have time to collect names. Bye, everyone.